What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And I was just wanting to show you what the grocery store in the Netherlands look like, because I am aware that, especially in America, they are much larger and have a much wider product variety. And uh, what I'm doing right here is grabbing some eggs. The only grocery store that I know that has these Omega-3 eggs is this one, so I'm stocking up on those for sure because every last meal of the day contains some eggs and let me tell you what i got from the grocery store all right guys i just got back from the grocery store you just saw you know some quick video of what the grocery stores in the netherlands look like we don't really have big grocery stores like in america and uh personally i love doing the groceries even though when i'm doing prep I mean, I guess that's a blessing because a lot of people hate doing it. A lot of people hate cooking, but I love it. That's why I always come up with these different ideas for meals to make them tasty, but still just as healthy and just as beneficial for your bodybuilding career, for your physique, as another meal would be without that tastiness about it. So yeah, I really want to know what it's like to be in a Walmart or any other of those 100 grocery stores you got in, the, in America like Trader Joe's, Harris Teeter, stuff like that. You know, there's so much big grocery stores there that uh, I really want to go there because I really like to watch the differences between each product. And there's always little changes you can make to make your diet that much more tasty. So let's take a look at what I bought today. All right, so this is basically part of what I bought. I bought also a little more vegetables, rice and eggs, but those are downstairs and upstairs right now because all of these items need to go in my fridge and freezer, which I have upstairs. Yes, my parents simply don't have a fridge that has the space for me in there as well. But anyway, let's start with the vegetables. These are Thai stir-fry vegetables. 400 grams, I put about 150 grams per meal. Um, that's the perfect amount for me to still be hungry for the next meal and it's still enough for the health and taste benefits of it. I really like to put this in every rice meal that I eat. And then we've got the fishes right here. I still had a lot of white fish left of my own, but this is salmon fillet and you've got wild salmon and Nordic salmon. This is Nordic salmon and the difference is, uh, as you can see right here, the fats are high, but the, and the protein is pretty high as well. So per portion, they say it's 25 grams of protein. That's half of this, and I eat one of these every single day. So that's 50 grams of protein in that one meal. And it has a lot of fat in there as well, and most of that fat is omega-3s. So that's a very nice addition to the diet as well, and very tasty. And then we've also got this mackerel fillet. It's smoked mackerel and it actually has more omega-3s than the regular salmon. As you can see right here, the fats are higher, the protein is still pretty high as well. And this also is exactly the amount that I eat uh, every single time that I eat a fatty fish on the day. I eat it once a day, 250 grams. These are 250 grams as well. So yeah, that's for one meal um, before sleep basically. Here we've got some potatoes, and you could buy plain potatoes, but these were actually at a discount, so I decided to take these, and I can, uh, let's see, this is 900 grams in total, every time I eat potatoes is 300 grams once a day, so I can do three days with this, and when you look at the ingredient list, and that's what you want to look at when you see marinated potatoes or, or uh, spiced potatoes, is that you don't see an added oil. And as you can see, potatoes is the first ingredient and the second ingredient is salt. And when that is the case, you know that it's really mostly potatoes and no other calories are added. As you can see, 82 calories per 100 grams. And it's a lot more tasty than regular potatoes, but, you know, it's just a little spiced up meal for your day. And right here, I actually got a lot of different garlic 
and regular uh, shrimps. These are literally stir-fry shrimps, garlic shrimps, pink shrimps, cocktail shrimps, but they're all pretty much the same uh, calories. And again, just like with the potatoes, these are garlic shrimps, right? So you can see they got some herbs on them, but they don't contain more, see, more calories than the other ones. And you can see that the protein is lower here. So instead of taking 300 grams of this, I take 400 grams of these shrimps. And it's just another nice change from the regular meal. You know, some shrimps have a little more protein, so you gotta really look at which shrimp you take. But it's pretty much in between 350 and 400 grams each meal. And it's just a nice change from the regular meals. Yes, it is a little more expensive, but I like spending that. And the reason why I bought so much is because at the store I was today, the shrimps were the cheapest of them all. You know, it's about five euros for 500 grams. And uh, compared to other stores, it is a lot cheaper for sure. So this is basically a little bit of what I buy to eat. Now, when you're on a budget, I definitely don't recommend buying shrimps because I will always be a more expensive protein compared to white fish such as tilapia, pangaceous and stuff like that. And the salmon, the same thing. You can take wild salmon, which is lower in fat, but it costs a lot less than Nordic salmon, which is higher in fat. I think it's due to mostly the taste, which they can really bump up the price with. Same with shrimps, it's a more popular fish to eat. Pinkaceous and tilapia are pretty much boring white fishes. Tuna, the same thing, boring fish, so <laughs> taste-wise. Very interesting for the bodybuilder though, but you know, that's why they make it a little cheaper and they can also mass produce it easier, I guess. Mass uh, farm it. So yes, this is kind of what I like to buy during groceries, during prep, everything is going great. I will post a video soon again that I'm 14 weeks out and I'm slowly seeing the leanness kick in, but I will bump it up a notch as I move on. And actually right now I got in the active fry 225 grams of cooked rice, basmati rice, 200 grams of Thai vegetables, 10 grams of coconut oil and 400 grams of shrimps. And the nice thing is that I can put it in there and I, of course I've added some spices as well. So I added in the active fry, go upstairs, record this video, clean up all my products, go downstairs and it's done. That is a nice thing about using an active fry. If I would not have an active fry, I would either have to prepare it before or after doing all this, what I'm doing right now. So as a bodybuilder, when eating a lot of meals a day, it is very useful to have such a device for sure. Okay, this is the meal that came out of the active fry. As you can see, everything is marinated in the spices and 10 grams of coconut oil. Put in about 200 grams of the Thai vegetables, which will go really well with the shrimps. And yeah, this is just a very nice, protein-packed, carbohydrate-loaded, vegetable-spiced meal. Let's enjoy it. All right, guys, as you know, I reached 100 thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel and I'm very extremely thankful for your support for that and I never thought I would have reached that within this time frame so I'm very pleased with that and to thank you just a very small thanks I'm of course going to be uploading a lot more videos aiming for higher quality videos new ideas so if there's anything you want to see by the way just let me know and I'll try my best to show you and I'm also going to do several giveaways so be on the lookout for those and for right now I've actually got a nice watch that I'm wearing right here this is called a Yod watch J-O-R-D so, you know you spell it like that but you say it like Yod and uh, it's a pretty nice watch it's a wood watch and uh, you know, I saw this website and they had a lot of these watches uh, of wood and they were very special and it's actually very light to be honest. It's, you know, doesn't feel heavy on the wrist at all. And usually I wear like a Fitbit for sport type of events. And with that I mean going to the gym or checking my cardio and heart rate and stuff. But when you go out, 
I didn't really have a watch. I used to have other watches, but they were cheap. And this time, I really you know, was interested in getting a higher-end watch. So this is just one of the many watches, and uh, it's pretty cool. And let me just show you what the package actually looks like when you get it. So it actually comes in this wooden box, as you can see. Pretty nice. Everything is wooden. You know, it's a nice design. And it's wrapped, the, the watch is wrapped around this one, this pillow. And there's a little drawer right here, which is pretty cool. This is for the humidity. If you store it away, you can do it in here and it actually keeps the water away. Because of course it is a wood watch. It is water splash resistant, but not water resistant, so. So I'm actually going to do a giveaway to get one of these watches and the price that I'm giving it away for is $180. So it's basically a code that you can use to spend on the website. And there's actually a link in the description right at the top to see what it's all about. You only have to write some information and then you will have a chance to win this prize. But as you can see right here, you can see all the watches, they look pretty nice and I simply thought it would be a nice thing to show you guys because that's really something, I usually am not really into fashion but when it's about this and what looks like this, I pretty much am. So anyway guys, let's move on to a workout. We arrived at the lag workout of today and I do think it is important that I show a lot of lag workouts because a lot of people don't really like to see a lag workout and a lot of channels recognize this so they post mostly upper body workouts but trust me, working the legs is just as important for a complete physique as the upper body even though the legs don't get as much love from everyone they definitely should and i started out with the leg extension to warm up the knees for exactly this exercise the front squat and i've been practicing this movement really because the most difficult part for me is not the actual squat itself but it's keeping the bar on my shoulders i notice that when i go a lot heavier that the bar actually slips down slowly like, if I go heavier than this one, 100 kilos, if I go to 110, 120, from that moment it kind of starts sliding down. And it's probably because I don't really have the posture necessary, because as you can see, when I go down, my back and my upper body goes forward just a little bit, and I should practice to eliminate this all together. I'm already... I'm already standing on these platforms for my ankle, so it's not my ankle flexibility. It really is my posture overall, but I definitely will improve as I keep practicing. And it's a great exercise for the front of your legs, really putting the stress on the quads more so than on the hamstrings and, and the glutes. And then we do the flat leg press. And this day will be quite a lot of compound exercises. Because my volume will be going up a little bit as I'm progressing throughout this prep. I'm about 14 weeks out right now, so I really uh, notice with my physique that when I bump up the volume, and uh, I don't have to do as much cardio, and I still maintain all my muscle mass, I actually get fuller if I keep my diet on point, and the extra volume will only make me lose extra fat weight. And I love to work out, so why not? And this flat leg press is actually, in this gym, not really a popular leg press. But if you do this a full range of motion, and to me full range of motion is at least 90 degrees on the leg press to keep the back out of it, then you will definitely feel the stress on your quads, that's for sure. And then it is time for a wide stance leg press on this one. You can go heavier on this leg press. A lot of people don't know this, but because of the angle of the leg press, which is going at 45 degrees upwards, it actually becomes lighter. In physics, you can do this calculation. If this leg press was flat, it would be a more difficult press to perform. So you might fill this entire machine up with weights. It still won't be as heavy as you think it is. So you might as well focus on the form itself. So first we did a wide stance leg press for the inner thighs, the adductors, and really focus on the glutes and hamstrings more. And this is a narrow stance leg press, and this focuses on the sweep of your legs, 
But if you go deep enough, especially when you go a little more high volume, you will fear glutes as well. Because glutes is something I need to work on as well. Pretty much the entire back of the legs or the legs in general. So normally in my off-season workouts I like to stay around 10 reps, sometimes 8 reps, sometimes 6 reps, but I've decided to keep those mostly at bay during this prep for the competition as I notice that a pump in the muscle group that I'm working is simply more occurring when I'm doing higher volume. And that's exactly what I will be sticking to because when I get a pump, I get a satisfactory feeling of working out in the gym and it actually gives me the fullness that I require to show on stage. And then we do two more exercises for the legs. This one is the abductor for the side glutes. This is something I haven't done in a while. I used to do this in the other gym that I used to train because they had a very heavy machine here. But this one is pretty heavy as well. If you go to at least 15 reps, then you definitely feel the burn. <laughs> and after the abductors, which is for the side glutes, basically, it's time for the adductors, which is the inner thighs or the adductors. Um, those are in the inside of your legs and a lot of people, even though they have great legs, if they miss this inner thigh thickness, it still looks like a thinner leg. You want to give the illusion of a big leg by closing the gap in between those legs. So I used to have this problem during my first competition. The quad development was there, but the inner thigh development wasn't there. So it really didn't look like big legs at all. So that's why I've been working on those for sure. And then the last exercise, the standing calf raise, focusing on this a lot, doing seven sets. Um, you know, sometimes it's good to focus on one single calf raise because then you can really focus on the contraction and stretch and don't go up in weight too much because you know that you still have an exercise to do. Anyway guys, this was the workout. I want to thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden.